y'all. Congratulations on finishing your first midterm. Uh, we are well into the semester and you guys are doing an awesome job. Um, so this week we're going to dive into stoichiometry. Stoichiometry I like to think of as sort of the economics of chemical reactions. So last week we learned how to balance chemical equations. And so this week we're going to be learning about how to use those balanced equations to do calculations. Uh, for example, how much of reactant A do I need in order to react with reactant B to produce the maximum amount of my product? Um, so with stoichiometry, we can ask ourselves questions like, if I burn 10 gallons of gasoline in my car, how much CO2 gets emitted into the atmosphere, um, for example? Or if I'm manufacturing uh, an airbag, how much sodium azide do I need to put into that airbag so that when it inflates, it releases the exact right amount of nitrogen gas to fill up the airbag? Stoichiometry is super important in environmental chemistry, super important in pharmaceuticals. Anytime you're trying to manufacture something or trying to understand how much of a certain chemical gets produced, um, you need stoichiometry. Um, so to illustrate some of the basic principles of stoichiometry, we're going to turn to ye old baking soda and vinegar reaction. Um, I've made five reaction vessels. Each bottle has 120 milliliters of vinegar. Each balloon has a different amount of baking soda in it. And then let's see what happens when we do the reaction. teaspoon of baking soda. Um, baking soda is what we call the limiting reactant, and so we don't have enough of it to react with all of the vinegar. In our second reaction, you can see the balloon gets a little bit bigger, have a little bit more baking soda, right? And so again, a baking soda is the limiting reactant, so not all of the vinegar has reacted. And then you can see that in the third, fourth, and fifth experiments, the balloons don't get significantly bigger and bigger and bigger each time, and that's because we've transitioned from the baking soda being the limiting reactant to now the vinegar being the limiting reactant. Um, so now, no matter how much baking soda we put in there, we've used up all the acetic acid in the vinegar, and so no more of carbon dioxide gas can be produced by the reaction. So I used stoichiometry to calculate how much baking soda and vinegar to put into each of these reaction vessels, and this week you're gonna use stoichiometry to do your own baking soda and vinegar experiments. And we're also going to look at a lot of different other applications of stoichiometry. So I look forward to seeing you in class. Mm -hmm.